Here's today's first word, daily devotion. On July the 6th, we focus on the Levites. And remember the Levites, they were priests. And then, of course, verse 15 shows us this particular vantage point of the chronicler. So look at chapter 6 and verse 1. The sons of Levi. There again, remember, the Levites were the priests. And then look at this particular vantage point, verse 15. Uh, Jehozadak went into exile when the Lord sent Judah and Jerusalem into exile by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. A couple of things to notice there. Number one, the vantage point. So the chronicler is writing the book of Chronicles after the events of the exile, as well as something else that we can point out is he sees the exile as something providentially allowed by the Lord. And in this case, we can not only say allowed, but caused when the Lord sent. He is active in causing uh, Judah and Jerusalem to go into exile. And his agent for exile was this king who, as far as we know, did not acknowledge God. Now, there might have been, of course, other kings that we've seen and we'll see that do acknowledge God or at least have some sense of God. But he uses this king, this wicked king of the nations, Nebuchadnezzar, to accomplish his will. But look at verse 37. Verse, excuse me, verse 31. Here we come back to this purpose of the entire book of Chronicles to show us David. And here is in verse 31, David ever before us. And so remember this as you read this section here. I think that this section in particular has about 81 verses here in Chronicles. There again, it's lengthy reading in Chronicles. But remember this as we read. Remember how we're seeing God guide and direct paths, individual paths that lead to his plan and purpose. And let's be encouraged with that. Remember, as we read, God is the God of the extraordinary. He created the earth as well as he's the God of the ordinary. He created me and you, and he concerns himself with what concerns us. And you say, how do, how do we know that he does that? Well, let's just turn to our New Testament reading today to find out. Romans chapter 4 is the case for faith. Here Paul is laying out to these Romans the case for faith. And look at what he says in verse 3. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now, that's important. Very important. Verse 4. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but is due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Now look at where we're going. Just as David also speaks, present tense, that's important again. He's not did say, but David is still speaking through Holy Scripture of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. And that's a quote there from Psalm 32. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. And who is the man whom the Lord will not count his sin? Well, listen, it's Christ Jesus. And through faith, this is Paul's point, through faith we are in him. Look at verse 10. How then was it counted to him? Back to Abraham. Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised so that righteousness would be counted to them as well. Now let's skip down to verse 16. I want you to see this. Paul is making a point. And the point that Paul is making is the Hebrew Bible. He's saying that the point of the Hebrew Bible is faith in the Son. The whole point of the Hebrew Bible. Now, we're seeing that in particular in Chronicles, but remember that Hebrew ordering, the tripartite ordering of the law, prophets, and writings? The last book of the Hebrew Bible is Chronicles. And here is Paul saying the whole point of the Hebrew Bible is faith in the Son. Look at how explicit verse 16 is. This is why it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence, God whom, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, calls into existence the things that don't exist. In hope he believed against hope, 
that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He didn't weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him a waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. This is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone. Look at this. Look at the way the Bible speaking to you today. It was not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Do you see how much the Lord loves you? Yes, yes, listen. Listen to the gospel. The Lord, God of the universe, who orders time and space, he loves you. And no wonder then, we turn to Psalm 5, no wonder we're encouraged then to do exactly what verse 11 and 12 says, that all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. And speaking of favor, remember, the favor of the Lord rests upon you all through Jesus Christ, the obedient one. And now by faith you are in him. And then look at the Proverbs. Even in finding a spouse, we are moving towards God's favor. The point is, is that he delights in you. Isn't that an amazing thought? I can't think of any greater thought today on July the 6th that God delights in me. And I'm happy to tell you that he delights in you.